Hey everybody, uh, today's uh, video is going to be on working with pandas and I've chosen to do this in the Jupyter Notebook framework because the Jupyter Notebook has a, a nice user interface and it uh, organizes the data in a way that's easy to visualize. So um, I thought I would introduce you to both pandas and Jupyter today. Now you're going to be receiving a, a large data file you download from eCampus and I'm going to show you how to set up everything so that you can uh, import that data into the Jupyter Notebook and then start manipulating it uh, with pandas. So several topics today, including how to read in the data. So let, let's get started. So I've got my open, I got my desktop open here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder just in my documents uh, folder. And that's where I'm going to place all my Jupyter uh, notebook. So I just called that Jupyter. And then I downloaded uh, the data uh, onto my desktop. And, I, and it comes in a folder called PPG data. PPG stands for photoplasmograph. And we'll talk about that. That's going to be this data is going to be a project, part of the project you'll, you'll be working on. So let's do this. So I'll open up my notebook and then I'm going to create a folder in here that I'm going to drop the, my data into. And let's do that. Let's call this uh, PPG data again. And then let me open up the zip file. And you'll see that there are a lot of data files here. There's 163 data files. I'm going to teach you how to read all of those in and manipulate that data. So I'm going to copy all of those over. Control A, copy, and then I'm just going to drop them into the PPG data. And it's uh, copying those all over. So now I've got my, my folder set up where I'm going to create my Jupyter Notebook. And then we can access the data that's in the PPG data folder. So let's close all that off. And then to, to launch Jupyter, go to your start window. And then you can see here under, I have it under Anaconda 364-bit. You go down and there's the, the spider IDE. We don't want to do that. We want to go to Jupyter Notebook here. So select that. Now, when it launched, it actually launches a server in the background. So you need to have this uh, server running. So I just like to minimize that. And then now it's giving me a view into my, uh, my desktop or my documents. And we put our Jupyter folder inside of here. Or did we? Yep, we did. Oops. Go back one, sorry about that. So I'm in my documents folder and we just created this folder called Jupyter and in, inside of that is PPG data. Now, what I'd like you to do is create a new Jupyter notebook by selecting new and then launching Python 3 here. So now we've created this new notebook. Across the top, here's where you create the new name and let's just name this working with pandas. So that's going to be the name of our file. So to get started here, let's. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the Jupyter Notebook itself. It's pretty explanatory, but it really has some nice features in that we can just load in the data here. It has a markup language, so we can create uh, really nice looking documents. And I'm going to do another video on that later. But the intent today is to show you how to read in this data and how to start manipulating it using pandas. So let's do this. So uh, pandas is, is a module, so we'll import pandas as PD. And then to run this, we just do shift enter. And then we can see that it loaded in. Now you can just hit the run bar here as well and it'll run that cell. It's called a cell within Jupyter. Okay, let's go ahead and read in our data and show how simple that is within the panda. We're well, using pandas and then how easy it is to display in the Jupyter note, notebook itself. So uh, working in pandas, you use data frames. I'm going to name our variable df. And then what I want to do is say df equals pd for pandas, and then read underscore CSV. And then first I'm going to show you relative how to do this with a relative path. So we're going to do relative path, which is the directory that I'm running this from, Jupyter. And then we want to look in the PPG data folder. And then the first file that I want to read in just to show here is called data underscore one, and it's a CSV, comma separated value file. So let's go ahead and read that in, data underscore one dot CSV. Now notice when we run this, get no errors and everything runs in. That's great. Now, the technique that I like to, to use, and I'll just show you this as a little tip, is I come up here into the, and I just copy the direct path. So I always, so this is gonna be correct. Now I'm reading that data, that data underscore one file, and I'll copy this in. Now the backslashes are different since I'm not using um, I'm copying it from Windows 
and this is a little tip to know as well, is that, as you know, the backslash is an escape code. So we want to say backslash, escape code, backslash. We need two of these in the path so that we read this properly. So just let me go ahead and put those in there. I like to do that just so I know exactly the file that I'm using. So I'll type in the direct path. So let's run this and we see that we've loaded it in. Now, um, we'll go ahead and add uh, another cell in here to run, which is on the next here, so we can do that. And let's do a few things. So we've read in this, and it's so easy to read in, read in the data. We've read in the data with really one line of code. And what I can do next is, instead of using any print statements, I can just type DF, shift enter, and then we can see that the data was loaded and, and we see the data's index, red, IR, red and IR time, Excel, X, Excel, Y, Excel, Z. Um, hmm, that looks a little odd. So let's go ahead and look, look into the data file and we can see the data file just by launching Excel. And oh, that's exactly what we have, but there's no data in uh, rows two through N. And that's, that actually, you can see over here from the, si the size of the file, that's only 1K. And really the data is starting over here in data five. So let's open that up. So there's all our data. So this happens in the real world. So this is real world, world data that was collected. And what we're collecting is the uh, photo, photoplasmogram, which we're going to then calculate the heart rate and the oxygen content in the blood from these, this real world data. But it looks like the first five data sets or first four data files are empty. So we should really read data five. So let's just go ahead and, and do that. Go back here and I'll read in data five. And we'll rerun that. And then I'll rerun this cell. And we'll see now that we've got the data in there. So this is one of the nice things about the Jupyter Notebook is that it really has nice output so that you can read the data effectively. What we're going to do is, is experiment and with our data here and then go back into Spider to write our full program. So let's expand this so that we have the full view. And then um, what I'd like to show you next is, is that a few attributes and methods of working with this, this data. So we can see across the top here, I've got the headers and all the names, and I'm going to have a, a presentation about this data set and how the meaning of each of these rows and columns, but let's defer that uh, now until later. And then let's just talk about how to manipulate the data. So we can see that we have uh, what Pandas does is send a, sets up its own index row here, which is this first column. But then in our data file, we actually have a column called index. And then we have a column called red, L for left, IR, L, which is infrared, left. And then we have the same thing on the right, red, right, IR, right. And then a time indication and Excel X, Excel Y, and Excel Z are the accelerometer data. So we're getting accelerometer data for X, Y, and Z. So that's an easy way to, to be able to just kind of read the file, sh show what's in the file. And notice down here we have 2,868 rows and columns. You can also get that information if you were just to do uh, DF shape. And it'll output a tuple that is the rows and columns of, of this data set. So some other things for me to show you, and let's just keep adding uh, some different uh, cells here, is that we could also say DF info and get info about each of these, uh, the, the data frame that we've read in. So let's go ahead and do that. And here's the different data types. Oh, this is a data type of, of N64. Here's the column names. And you're kind of seeing something interesting here is that they're not lined up, is that this index column is and one has one indentation, but then it looks like there's a space in front of the, the red. So that's kind of interesting. This is maybe the way the data was set up to be acquired. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can show that by there's a, a attribute that we can use called DF columns and then run that. I'm going to misspell columns. Let's run, run that cell and we can see, sure enough, index, it doesn't have a space in red and IR and the, uh, the accelerometer and time data all have a space in there. So that's kind of odd in working with our data. Maybe we should fix that in here a little bit. So some of the other things that we can do in working with uh, these data frames is there's a method called head, which will give you the first few rows and columns 
with the column headers, and we can see that it gives you the first five. And if we wanted to do the first 10, we could do 10. And then there's another function called tail, which gives you the last set of uh, rows as well. So here's the last row, which is 2,867, and then the data. Now, notice that our data here is an integer form. And something to realize is that this data was collected from uh, an A to D to converter, analog to digital converter. So this is the digital counts. It's often called counts in the uh, A to D world. And then this data, for example, in accelerometers, and that's what I want to show you, we're going to start working on here, is uh, it uh, comes from the A to D, and I think it's 14 bits of data. And if we just show that uh, when it's 2 to the 14th power, that it's the data ranges over basically 16,000 uh, uh, steps or counts, and often I'll refer to these as, as, as the counts, but it's just an integer value that's been returned from the analog to digital converter. So um, let's, let's show a couple other functions that we, or methods or attributes that we can run here, and I'm going to do something called df describe, and it's a method, so make sure you include the, the parentheses, and let's run that. And it really goes into and, and does some analysis, and we'll show this in your in your exercise. Your assignment is that you can actually do mathematical operations on the rows and describe automatically does that for you. So it tells you what the mean is for each of the different columns, standard deviation, minimum, the different percentiles, and then the maximum. So that's an interesting thing to take a look at. So let's go ahead and do a couple things with this data. And what I want to do is I want to create a new data frame. And I want to, to assign that to the same name, df, but then I want to operate on the data frame. And then what I want to do is I want to change that accelerometer, uh, accelerometer x, y, and z that had that odd space in them that I want, I want to rename that um, to something else. So let's show that, that it has kind of an interesting name here is that it has that space in there that may confuse us later. So if we did accelerator, accelerometer x, and we slice that, that column and we want to deliver rows 0 through 5. We could do this. and I don't need to assign that to a new. I just want to do that in, in place. And let's run this. And we show that we've got 137, 88, negative 12, 30, and 125 for the accelerometer x. Uh, out of X, Y, and Z different directions, and we took rows 0 through 5. So that's how you can uh, slice the data out, one method to do that. But what, really what I want to show is that we want to rename um, this column so that we have uh, proper names that we can work with. So let's do that. So I'm going to say, say the new DF, I want to assign the new DF, and then I want to operate on the object DF, and I want to rename, and let's take those the columns that I want to re rename, and the syntax here is a dictionary, so it's called accelerator x. And then we want to rename that to accelerometer x, no spaces, so it's a little bit easier to manipulate. And now let's do that for all three of the axes, accelerator y, and commas between each of these different column name, column headers, and then we will set that straight. A little tedious to get this set up, but I thought I would show that to you since you'll be working with this data. So let's go ahead and do that. So now if I go and list out a new data frame, if I do data frame, We can see that we have accelerometer x, accelerometer y, and z with no spaces in there. Oh, but I made a mistake. I did not include the space here, so it didn't find it. So it kept kept the names the same. So let me go ahead and change that real quick. And so, whoops, I did the wrong one. Let's set that up proper way, and that should be right. So we rerun that, and we have the output. Now we can see we have all the names there. It may be easier to show if we just did the df uh, columns again. Now we can see that we have not, we have changed the x 
and the Y and the Z, but we still have the spaces in the other columns. So that shows you the method for doing that. Now, once we have this set up, here's something interesting um, to be able to show within the Jupyter environment, is if I was to go ahead and plot this data, what I could do is just import matplotlib.pyplot, which we've done before now as PLT, and then uh, let's run that, get that module imported, and then if I just want to plot that accelerometer Y data, I could say plot.plot, and then let's take the data frame object, and we want to take the accelerometer Y data and, and show that on a graph, on a plot. And I think I've got that set up, and we'll run that, and we can see that we, now we have the raw data that we're showing in the plot. So that was a, a brief introduction about how we can read in data from a, a data file with one command, read the CSV file, and then start manipulating this data, the data frame data in pandas, and then uh, pandas is, an, an, is built upon NumPy, so it's, it's fast and has a lot of operations that are built in so that we can start doing analytics and numerical operations on the, on the columns of data. So that was a short video to introduce you into to Jupyter and Pandas, and then I'll do a follow-on one where we look at uh, manipulating the data within our program within Spider. Until next time.